welcome back so flow processes are very important in engineering applications and we'll be looking at analysis thermodynamic analysis of flow processes but we'll begin the analysis with a fairly simplistic way of looking at it just focusing on the mechanical engineering mechanical energy aspects of the uh, a fluid flowing element Okay, so I'll clarify what I mean by a fluid element. So in the previous lecture, what we had done was we introduced internal energy rather elaborately. Okay, so we set the basis on why we need the concept of internal energy to go beyond mechanics. Okay, so and then we introduce very briefly the first law. So what we are doing here is assembling uh, the various segments of first law. Uh, okay, so this will take a couple of lectures. We want to elaborate something more on heat and all different form of work interaction in a system. Okay, so all right. So what do we mean by mechanical energy? Okay, so this is uh, in this case. Okay, so. In engineering analysis, uh, a very important aspect is how do you obtain work? Okay, so you obtain work by converting some form of energy. So here, uh, what I call mechanical engineering energy is uh, I picked up this definition from your textbook, Schengel and Bolus, the, the form of energy that can be converted to mechanical work completely and directly by an ideal mechanical device like an ideal turbine. Okay. Uh, so this is an, an asymptote okay, in a physical process. Okay. That is an uh, extreme in a physical process. That was, that's what I mean by an asymptote. So this is useful. Okay. So it gives you a bound. Okay. Whenever you are trying to analyze processes, you need some bounds. Okay. So this gives you an upper bound of an efficiency of if all of energy is converted to mechanical work, so this will be that bound, okay? But the real devices uh, don't have this amount of efficiency. So the amount of mechanical work obtained due to variety of reasons will be less than what can be imagined here, all right? So later we will do a lot of bookkeeping, okay? accounting of energy via concepts like control mass, control volume, uh, energy flow across control surface. Okay, so we have not introduced any of these terms. We will uh, elaborate what these terms mean. But for now, what we are going to analyze, uh, the way we are going to analyze is we are going to look at energy of flowing fluids per unit mass. Okay, so when I call a fluid element, what I meant was I'm looking at energy per unit mass. Okay, so that's my focus. You are aware of uh, these forms of energy. Typically, if you look at a system, let's say this can be just a pipe uh, and steam can be flowing here. Okay, so there is a cross section. So you, based on the area, uh, a cross sectional area, you can define a mass flow rate. Okay, so depending on the density, you can, uh, depending on the temperature, you can define a density. From that, you can have a, a mass flow rate of, for example, in this case, steam. So what we're interested in, what is the expression for energy flow rate? That is uh, mass flow rate times energy per unit mass. That's the energy flow rate. So there are two forms of energy which you're uh, uh, commonly aware of, kinetic energy and potential energy. This is the energy uh, velocity of the center of mass. This you know how to define and then potential energy. So when you bring in internal energy, so the overall energy and the energy per unit mass, this is small e, uh, can be written as uh, this thermodynamic internal energy, kinetic energy, and potential energy. Okay, so this internal energy per unit mass, uh, kinetic energy per unit mass, potential energy per unit mass. So this is the, so the, so typically what do you do if you're in thermodynamics class, uh, you focus on, you try to avoid this and focus on just the internal energy. 
But if you are on a, let's say, fluid mechanics class, an introductory fluid mechanics class, um, fluid physics class, for example, you may focus only on this. But in most of the engineering applications, uh, involve both thermodynamics and, and mechanical aspects, mechanical energy aspects. So you should know how to combine uh, th this with these things. So we are going to take a first step here, all right? So in, uh, so going further, so the mechanical energy of a flowing fluid, if you look at per unit mass, uh, can be considered in with three components. Okay, this is a kinetic energy and potential energy. That's not a big deal. So if you look at this term, what is this term? P divided by rho, but rho is mass per unit volume, right? So if you put mass here and volume comes here, okay? So PV, this is actually, this term is the work involved in assembling the fluid uh, to a particular pressure and volume, okay? Per unit mass again, okay? So, uh, so this is that term, okay? So the uh, work involved in, uh, in fact, uh, PV work involved in assembling the fluid uh, to a particular pressure and volume. And this is per unit mass, okay? So this can be, so this, when you look at it this way, it's not obvious, but convert rho into mass per unit volume, then uh, this is, there is PV by M, okay? So this is kinetic energy per unit mass and potential energy per unit mass, okay? So, these are, that's the meaning of these three terms. So often uh, we want total energy. Uh, so that is you convert per unit mass times uh, mass flow rate. So that is the rate of mechanical energy uh, of a flowing fluid. Okay, so the time element comes here. This is the rate here. So uh, we, nobody is, uh, in, most, in most contexts, we are not really interested in when these are not changing, okay? So when this, when we want to think about how to generate work, uh, so you typically there is a change in energy that gives rise to some work, okay? So we are interested in change in mechanical energy per unit mass, okay? So we would consider two points, uh, two and one, okay, for just uh, uh, reference. And then we are going to look at these changes uh, uh, of these three components at two different points. I'll, I'll give you an example in the next slide. Okay, so this is the typical uh, way of we are going to start your bookkeeping, energy bookkeeping. That's going to help you in look at how much work you can obtain uh, from energy processes. So you can, again, this whole per unit mass can be converted into uh, rate of mechanical energy change. So let us see this at, with a concrete example. So what is that we have here? Okay, so we have something like a hydroelectric uh, energy conversion device, okay, energy to work conversion device. So what is that? For example, uh, you could imagine that solar energy, just the nat nature has evaporated this uh, water body, and then you have formed, uh, clouds have been formed from clouds. Uh, water has, via the clouds, the water has been transferred to this elevation, at a higher elevation. So compared to this elevation, water is at a, this water body is at a higher elevation. So when you allow this water body uh, to go from this point one, 2.4, there is a decrease in potential energy. Okay, so this is a large water body. So even when the water is uh, flowing from here to this place, the rate of uh, velocity at this point is negligible. Okay, same thing here. Okay, because this is a large cross section. So uh, this volumetric uh, flow doesn't really give rise to much velocity at this point, at this point too, okay? So the kinetic energy can be neglected. So essentially what you have is uh, the change in potential energy is what is giving rise to uh, work that is obtained, all right? So, and, uh, so in, in the pressure is 
Also at P1 and P2, what is the pressure? The pressure is just atmospheric pressure, okay? So the difference in atmospheric pressure is marginal, okay? So you can neglect that also. Uh, and then the velocity is also can be neglected. So the only term that survives in energy is a change of a potential energy, which is giving rise to work that can be uh, generated using an ideal uh, turbine and given to a work generator. All right. So that is uh, uh, one way of implementing the equations which we saw in the previous slide. So you can look at this slightly more closely, for example, around this area. Okay. So if I look at uh, in this area, so this pipe, the cross section remains the same. So what is the difference? So I'm doing a balance between points two and point three, right? So if I look at point two and point three, again, from the previous equation, what is changing is the pressure, okay? So the pressure here is higher and pressure here is lower. And this delta P, pressure drop, uh, is what is showing up as work. Okay, so whenever you uh, see what is generating this work, it is the pressure drop. Okay, so a pump does the opposite thing. You apply uh, for a, you, you can use a pump to increase the pressure. Uh, but here in this case, there's a pressure drop, which is giving rise to generation of work, right? So this is a very simple introduction uh, to flow energy processes in a flowing fluid, uh, flowing fluid. We look at it much more elaborately, but uh, we have just made an introduction to this topic. So let me stop here. Thank you.